Hey guys, uh, guess where we are? JB Factory in Melbourne. <laughs> We've come down to see our van being built and to bring you guys on a tour of the factory. Um, we're pretty excited. And I, it's like, I guess, even though it's a, a new van, to us it's like a new child. You get that sort of a feeling. You come along and, uh, yeah, see what's happened. Um, I'm probably talking shit now. But we're pretty excited to actually go and have a look at the factory and see how our vans are made and show you guys all about it. And Yeah, let's go. The factory itself is on 62,000 square metres. So it's a fairly big factory. But anyway, come with us and uh, we'll bring you on in and show you how a caravan gets made. Let's go. Catch us. Hey, g'day guys. Right, we are down here at the uh, JB factory. I have here to my left Paul and Wayne. Wayne is the uh, marketing manager. marketing manager, and uh, Paul is the production manager. All right, so what are we going to do this morning, guys? Uh, we'll be heading through the factory. This is the um, first part is a chassis department where we do our chassis. Uh, primarily, we do our off-road vans here. So I'll take you through each section. Awesome. All the steel that comes in here is Australian steel, no imports. Um, in this section over here, they're, they're getting the order for any particular van and they're cutting it uh, to size, getting prepped for the welding section. We do a lot of our componentry and cutting on our um, plasma cutter. This plasma cutter, what's, what, what's it actually do? What, what's its main job or its role? Oh, it's cutting our channels for all the wiring and what have you. So one of, one of the main things uh, here, what well, you would see different to automotive, it's a repeatable process in um, automotive when they're building chassis or what have you. So by doing that, you would usually have like a robot cell. It'll be repeatable, it'll be done. Because we know off-road vans and different variations of layouts, every chassis is different. And it's taking different loads. So it's a best spoke um, chassis on every single one. It's got its own design, so the engineering team might change the loads and what the framing is on each one. Right. So there's no set template for everyone, it's that's everyone's in, individual. That's right, every chassis is engineered individually. Wow. So obviously they punch something into the computer and the computer then knows what it's doing, tells that's, the that's machine, correct. the machine does it. That's correct. Because And because every chassis is a little bit different, the wiring trail might change a bit. Probably the, the, the biggest benefit is that um, with a lot of caravan manufacturers, it's kind of um, if they think it's to us, is that, <coughs> excuse me, if you got a problem with your chassis, they're saying, oh, go to this company if you got a problem with your chassis. At least with JB Caravan, if you got a problem with your chassis, you're coming back to us. And we know from start to finish what's going on. Yeah? yeah? Um, and to be honest with you, if you were to expect one of our chassis to another company, yeah, you'll see quite a big difference. So as mentioned before, any layer, every model, every layout change will change the, how the engineering department have set up the chassis that we're going to make. Also, the suspension takes into account in the mounting bracket. Okay? So 
these guys do specific to any engineering plans that have been given and they dig it up. So these guys will get everything into place, pack weld it, and then you'll go over to the next process over here. And is that where they'll they'll finish welding it? So these guys just pack weld it? That's right. Yeah. So they'll do all the subframe, then I'll go over to the next section and get finished welding over here. What's the party good on there? Because obviously it doesn't stay on the van. Yeah, so that's it. that's how it can go up on a. You'll see it further down. That bit there is actually so it can go up on the sand. Okay. The swivel. After the after the welding is complete, I'll come over to this section. I'll clean it up. So once the chassis are built. Um, they come into this section over here um, where all the welds are inspected individually. Once they pass that inspection test, uh, we start vapor blasting, which essentially is like a whip blast. It's a very light blast to clean up the welds and give a, a bit of a profile to the surface, um, which is very important when you're painting or especially putting on um, Raptor. It gives it a very strong bond. So when you're saying whip blast, is that like sand blasting, but just not as coarse or? Exactly, that's and correct. Is it just air and water that's coming out or what, what, what yeah, is so it? It's a small amount of garnet that's coming out. I can show you an example of what garnet we're using over here. Um, and here we go. Okay, and that gets blown through that's the gun right. so that onto mixed, the surface. That, that mixes with water and goes onto the surface. Okay. So after the dressings are vapor blasted, they come in here and they get painted. At the moment, this gentleman is actually painting Raptor. So all our off-road bands come with a, a Raptor coating. And again, you do it all in-house, you don't send it off to get done. All in-house. I just assume, and I'll bet you most people out there would assume the same thing, so they go off, get done, then come back here. But it's interesting to you do everything here. Oh, well, that's right, everything's done here. So it's an epoxy primer, and then the wrapper goes on top. After every chassis is painted, we perform a film test to make sure we get the correct amount of thickness on, this, on, the, on the job, and it has to pass that um, inspection point. Once that's confirmed, uh, so once the chassis are painted, they get inspected again for all the paint work that it passes uh, our quality control system. Once that's done, the tanks, your suspension, your tank covers all go on, and your wiring is also completed and run through the chassis. Is there a particular reason they paint the wheels orange, or? To identify the um, different suspension types oh, and okay. um, hubs that we have. So a key point to this process is, is all the torque settings. Many different suspensions, uh, different requirements. So it's very important to follow the procedure. Why don't you went and bought a torque wrench from the markets on the weekend? Very important that we always, so that, that's something that um, we always pass on to our customers, is the torque settings. Um, I, I recommend that people check their van and their wheels uh, before every trip. Um, Throughout all our dealerships and within our own process, you have all the torque settings for your different suspensions and your procedures. All of our dealerships and our third-party dealers have this information. It's just like going to McDonald's. You want the same service. Um, it doesn't matter where you go in Australia, you need that same level of service. So all our service centers around Australia have this information. That's awesome because like, Obviously, most normal people will just get out there and they'll get their wheel wrench. And they'll jump on it as tight as they can, or some people aren't as oh, strong as that, others. And, that, and that's correct. And if you're over tightening, you, you, you gotta can bust your nuts or yeah, that, that's right. Threads. Yeah. That's exactly right. Oh, that's awesome. I actually, to be honest, I didn't know that in my last handover. Yep. So that's something that I'm keen to find out about. Hence, I just said I went and bought a torque wrench because obviously, if you want 
longevity out of your van, you've got to like not only rely on a service, but you've got to do a first parade every time you get in it. And if you're going to travel for the day, walk around, check your nuts, check all your little things and that, and make sure it's good to go. That's right. And, and just recently, we've prepared a checklist for our customers also, a pre-travel checklist which we're starting to do on handover also. Oh, that's excellent. See with the Raptor, we towed everything, everything from the underfloor to the inside of your step. Yeah, you're saying it's really durable. So rocks and that flicking up on it isn't real. It's, a, it's like any so uh, abrasiveness is yes, but any sort of it's, it's a rock that's going. It's it's not um uh, chip proof. Yeah. Okay. So obviously if something's coming at high velocity, just like with normal. Is it a lot more durable than normal paint? Yeah, definitely. Obviously it looks a lot better than say the uh, um, galvanised or the painted. Yeah. Would you recommend the uh, Raptor over the galvanised and over the painted? Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, and, and the great thing about Raptor is if the customer needs to do a touch-up, uh, that's something they can purchase. They can purchase the Raptor and touch it up themselves. Oh, okay. From, um, from group, I mean, from you guys, you buy the Raptor or? Oh, no, they can buy it off the shelf from uh, Autobahn or okay. any other place. And the, the thing I love about Raptor is it can, um, it's uh, five years later, the paint where it's still the same. same. So you get the gurney out, you wash your van, looks the same. Let's go. This is our production control system, so this will show us where, this is live tracking where all our chassis are throughout the factory. So these chassis are in assembly, so this one over here, this is our assembly point. That's the one over here. So this shows where the whole factory is, from building to electrical, all the way through to QC. Not only that, if there's any issues or you want to communicate something to anyone within the factory from the design team to myself or marketing or whoever it is that can actually kick into the job you can actually bring the plan up all the design drawings are available make any comments or issues notifications and make a comment you can either take a photo and send it to the appropriate team if there's any issues and they all have obviously access to this. That's so. right. So every, every section of the company 
has access to this. Every team leader. From chassis department to the furniture guys. Everywhere. So as soon as as soon as a welding for a chassis is completed over here, it will automatically send a notification to our furniture team. Okay, you need to start building the furniture for this chassis. Do you know what sort of manpower, like how many blokes would you have working in here purely on the chassis? Um, approximately about 26. 26. Yeah. And obviously with COVID and all that going through, if you get COVID in here or you lose a few people, what does that actually do to your process? It obviously pushes it all back a bit. That's yeah, it's challenging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very challenging. How do you make up when something like that happens? Because I know back over Christmas, I think you've had a two-week shutdown or whatever yeah. with COVID and you've had to do a deep clean or whatever. How do you make up that time to get back into... Oh, we try to do as much overtime as possible, okay, but um, I, I think it's, uh, I think everyone's struggling to do that catch-up. Um, we're, we're in the process of getting there at the moment, but... Um, yeah, it's challenging. It's, 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 it's an ongoing thing yep. at the moment. We haven't come on the other end of it um, yet, but um, yeah, we're working towards it. Okay.